Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, we are here at the Kalamazoo Air Zoo with something a little different today. I'm going to talk quiet so I don't bother too many people. I'm going to show you around the, the place that kind of shaped my interest in uh, aircraft. So, no gameplay today, just, just some planes. It's our pink P-40. give you a nice overview of the main room. We have the world's only SR-71B and the world's only XP-55 Ascender. We're not going to be taking any of the rides today, though. It's a P-47 back there. P-39. F-14. F-18. So, let's take a walk around. We're going to be focusing on World War II aircraft today for obvious reasons. See now, this is new since I was last here.
And here we are with some cats. One of the things about the Kalamazoo Air Zoo is that they restore planes here. This is one they dragged out of the lake and restored it to this. It's currently on loan to us again, but... And let's go see what else I can find. And of course, the air zoo has things other than old planes. Some sort of exhibit about a tiger, I don't know. We're not going to be going into that. And a large exhibit on NASA. If my camera will focus. Oh no. We're not going to go into the infinity room. Nobody wants to see a billion of me. Hell, one is pushing it.
I'm not going to spend much time in here. It's not to my interests. Stupid thing.
And as you can probably tell from the blowing wind sound effect and the snow, it is colder than a witch's tit in Kalamazoo currently. So we're going to make it a brisk walk. The Kalamazoo Air Zoo is right next to the Kalamazoo uh, Airport, which is just over there. So we're going to just hurry on. I've actually never been over here. Uh, let's take the let's take the paved path. Now, one of the things I want to see over at the East Campus, depending on how many people are there, I might not narrate it, is uh, the East Campus is where they do a lot of the restorations. Like during the tour, you saw you saw the uh, Dauntless SBD3, which they dredged out of Lake Michigan. I think it was Lake Michigan, and restored it here. So the East Campus used to be the only campus. Like I remember when I was a kid, this building here didn't exist. The East Campus is uh, that's a big gun. East Campus is where they do all their restoring work. They also have a few uh, jets, like I think they have a MiG-15. They have, I think they might have a Panther. I don't know. It's been a while since I've been over there. I don't know the planes off the top of my head. So we're gonna go over there. And we're gonna go see on their how their current restoration project is going. I think it's a Wildcat, if I remember correctly. Last time I was there, it was just a couple of wings and a like taken halfway taken apart engine. I am looking forward to seeing how they're doing. So, I will be right back. And here we are at the East Campus. It's a little loud, because somebody's... Got, got the plane over there. I think it's a... Probably a B-57. It's got these steps in, out of the wind a little bit. This is an old building. I don't honestly remember when it was made. Or, B-57B. There's the airport, so let's just get inside of this wind. Afternoon. Afternoon. Joining us from the other building? Yeah. It's a little chilly. <laughs> Can I see your face? Yes. Okay, great. great. Yeah. I have a random. Been here before? Oh yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. I have a uh, random question. When was this? Do you know when this building was built? Well, I don't know when it was built. I know it became an air zoo about 1969 or something like that. Wow. 70 right in there. Used to be a Piper Cub repair facility. I see Piper it. Cub air Force, Really? Before it became the air museum. Huh. Yep. I didn't know that. I jeez, it's been here as long as I can remember. I had to. Yeah. I guess it's been long. Yeah. So it. Been a, been a long time. I think things were like this area we're in right now might have been added on to the uh, hangar. If it was, it was or, at, it was before the nineties. Or it's the other way around, and the hangar was added on to this part of the building. I can't. I'm not sure which. They told me. Let's see. Been extensive remodeling. He was able to keep control of the Oh yeah. All right. Cool. Thank you. Yeah. Sure. Oh, an enemy surface-to-air missile, or a fire missile, but the pilot was able to control it and get back to base. Oh, Imagine yeah. how big this plane was if this was only that. Well, it, it's right here, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Pretty amazing, isn't it? And how smart were they to keep it so that we could see it? A-10 engine calling. Hey, you need to find a spot over here to stand while I use it. Nothing was on the knee brushes. It was all the wall over there. Can we go over it there? No, you can go right here. That was all the way. Now let's get down their property. But that answers the question, doesn't it? This brings me back. Let's take a walk around.
you know, considering the people who fly these in War Thunder, it's a pretty apt name. F-80 shooting star. It sounds like they're actually working on the restoration project. I can hear tools and stuff. This looks like it's been restored since I was last here. officially run out of room on my camera so we're gonna do this with the phone real quick apparently the f4 i was just talking to that guy they're working on repainting the uh, f1 104c starfighter to original colors and that f4 phantom they repainted recently to match the squadron i'll take a pic i'll go back and look at the get, get a picture of the uh what squadron it is but they're gonna have the guys who are a member of that in vietnam over and take a picture of them in front of it so we're gonna make this real quick we just go over here and take a look at the restoration project. In general, or? It's just World War II aircraft. Uh huh. Okay. Well, this one was on the bottom of Lake Michigan for 68 years. How many? 68 years. Wow. You can see where we're repairing the wings. Yeah, I stopped by late last year and you guys have already made a lot of progress in them. Yep, the uh, new flaps. We built these flaps from scratch. We got the repair. Most of the repair work done here on the, the wing. Uh, here's an example of befores and afters. Unusable, new. Huh. Perfect replicas. Uh, these are the cranks you use to release the pin to fold the wing. Oh. If you come over here, I'll show you one that's done. Okay, yeah, and that's what folded the wings up and down for 
Well, it pulls the pin out. Pulls this mm. locking pin out. Okay. So that the wing can be folded. Right, right, okay. Yeah. And they stow inside the wing, but when you're ready to unfold, you move it up like this, push it down, and then start cranking. Of course, this is upside down. Right now. Yeah. Then that pulls that pin out, so you need to have someone holding the end of the wing so it doesn't like swing. Okay, yeah. Because it'll, it'll, you know, go like this. So you want to have somebody holding the wing on, and then until you pull this pin completely out. Then while you pull this out, this flag sticks out, which is painted red. It'll stick out about this far to tell the pilot. It gives him a visual that if he looks out and sees this red tab sticking out of the wing, that means that pin isn't in. Oh, okay. So yeah, yeah don't take off with the... The visual indicator telling you that's not locked or it's not fully engaged for flight. So when you, when you guys restore this, do you restore it to like flying edition? Not this one. Most airplanes that we restore, we do fly, do it flying condition. This one we're not. It's, the, it's owned by the Navy. They just want all the damage repaired, all the corrosion replaced, or you know, replaced with new. Uh, this will probably be. It'll look like it just rolled out of the factory when we get done. It'll have all new paint, all new plexiglass. Everything will be repaired. Wow. And then it may be hanging at Navy Pier. That's a huge project. How long does something like that take, generally? Eight years. Eight years. Wow. But here, you know, you can see the befores and the afters. And here's another example. Here's a part. This is a control horn that would have bearings in it for the control system. Well, it's not usable. Yeah. <laughs> so we have to copy it. It's that, that long under... So you just like custom make all of it, just from scratch. Mm -hmm. Wow. One piece at a time. That's a, that's a labor of love. Right. It's passion. I've got board members over there. I'm supposed to go talk to it. Uh, they're brand new board members. Yeah, I saw a few of the uh, well-dressed people wandering around talking to people, shaking hands when I was over there a few minutes ago. Okay. So. Well, apparently at 4.15, I'm supposed to be over there. And oh, dear. My boss wanted me to bring some before and after stuff, so I figured I'd take this. Thank you very much for showing me. Oh, no problem at all. No problem at all. You know, it's funny. When this came in, the guy that recovered it told, Bob, or told Troy, our CEO, oh, they could restore that in five years. <laughs> well, what's he doing telling the CEO how long it's going to take? I'm the one that restores these things, and I know it takes eight years. Well, now that's if they're not broken in half. I remember when the Dauntless was finished. That was absolutely See, that one amazing. That wasn't broken in half. You're true. <laughs> did de skin it. I mean, it was completely apart. The wings, the ribs, the stringers, everything was laying on benches and in boxes. Oh, wow. That was the difference between the SBD and this. It was uh, not built by Grumman. See, the Grumman's are anodized. Mm -hmm. So you don't have to take them apart. The corrosion isn't bad. Now we'll sand all this down to bare metal and reprime and repaint. Oh, okay. we'll have a new paint job. I I can't wait to see it. I'm gonna have to come in and when when the Nature Center does the reciprocal membership thing, I'll probably stop by a bunch sure. then. Sure, that's in May. Yeah. I, I work over in the Asia Center and we get a lot of people from the Here Arizona. you can see new parts that had to be made where we didn't have any. See, thieves went down to the bottom of the lake, 200 feet down, and stole parts of these things. Why? Just for scrap? There must be a market for it. Like a black market or something? Huh, maybe like historical souvenirs, maybe? Flaps. So we had to build brand new flaps. <laughs> I don't know. They stole the elevators and the rudder that's weird like it, it must have been all they could take for scrap or something well, no i don't think that you dive down 200 feet to the bottom of lake michigan to get a piece of scrap metal that's light you know for the money there must be a market for it it's got to be Thank you very much. Oh, you're welcome. No problem at all.
was a unexpected surprise, and wow. Also, I'm going to rock it now. So this concludes our little guided trip through the uh, Kalamazoo Air Zoo. I'm here in the cockpit of an F-16, or well, at least the mock-up of one. Yeah, I had a pretty good time. I got to talk with some of the employees about some of the paint jobs they were doing some the planes. I got to talk with the uh, restoration people. So, it was really cool. I got to see... I've, I've always loved this place. It's, it's absolutely amazing. If you can stop by here sometime, if you're ever in Michigan, I suggest it. Hey, look, there's a plane taking off over there. But, yeah, they do amazing work, and they say it can take them eight years to, to repair that fully, so... They're, they're working over there. So, they're also talking about maybe getting an A-10 in here, which would be kind of cool. And the, uh... So, yeah. I had a, had a great time, and uh, thanks for coming with.